Okay, here we're going to be looking at soil pH. So there's no difference between the pH of soil versus the pH of water. It's all following the same 0 to 14 scale. When we're talking specifically about soil pH. We're looking at assessing the pH of the actual media or substrate that the plants are going to be growing in. So while it is the soil we're going to be looking at, if you're having a problem with pH, it's a good idea to test your irrigation water. Because testing the pH of your irrigation water is a good idea because this can impact plant growth and soil quality. So here, for example, this is your irrigation water and it has a pH of 4.96. This could vastly be impacting the uh, pH of your soil. And again, depending on what media you might be growing in, wondering why it's so acidic, in part, test your water to start. The pH scale is the same 0 to 14 scale. It's logarithmic because, as you can see here, it's a tenfold increase per each pH unit that it goes up. And this is important. So if you said, oh, I'm only a couple points off, well, that's like tenfold increase. So that can get exponentially off there. And this uh, reason why we want to maintain that pH is it affects the availability of nutrients for our plants. So how do we test it? Well, it's easy to do. Uh, pH meters only can test liquid, not dry soil. So you have to go through and develop a liquid medium or slurry from your soil. Be sure the tester you're using is calibrated and the probe doesn't dry out. Uh, there's a term called when it dries, it dies. This is why you'll see in labs, pH probes are kept in usually distilled water at all times, even when not in use. Now, how do you go about uh, testing soil? Well, you want to start with a clean probe. So you don't want to have any interaction or contaminants. You want to add distilled water to the soil to create a slurry and then test the pH. As I mentioned before, you can't just kind of take the probe and put it in the pot, put it in the soil and get an accurate reading for pH. You need to kind of create this slurry solution here uh, to, again, get that accurate reading. And that's why you want to use distilled water so the water you're adding isn't influencing the total pH. So, uh, soil um, pH testing, best done as part of a complete soil test that's carried out with consistent protocols in a professional lab. I'd much rather send my soil or media out to a lab to get professionally done. They do make these kits where you kind of add um, solutions and you kind of look at the color. Uh, these can give you varied results. It's best to get it done professionally in the lab with set protocols. That target uh, pH is what you should be shooting for, and that's usually around 6.5 to 7 or so. 6, 8 is usually kind of the ideal or the sweet spot. No, if you're growing hydroponically, they could be better. Um, you might target might be a little bit more acidic, uh, that 5.8 to 6.8 or 6.3 being the ideal pH. And again, acidic is pH is below 7. Those hydroponic setups tend also to have reduced buffering capacity if it's just pure water. This could cause rapid swings in the pH, and this can result in very poor plant performance. So if you are growing hydroponically, you want to make sure there's buffers in place to help resist change in pH. So I do want to maintain it slightly more acidic, but you kind of want to prevent that pH from jumping around a lot. So it's really going to affect uh, and negatively impact your plant's growth. Now, if correcting or rising the soil pH, that's very common for uh, New England soils. Uh, which is typically looking at five and a half to six, so often this needs to be raised. It can even be less than this. Limestone is the most common method for raising soil pH. Um, this is a general term. There's many different types of lime. People might say, oh, I'm liming the soil. Well, we can look more specifically at the options you have within the broad category of limestone. So there's dolomitic lime. This is the cheapest and easiest to find. Uh, you see right here, dolomitic limestone. The kinds are it's very high in magnesium. So if you have a soil test that comes high in magnesium, well, odds are you might be looking at another lime alternative. But this is the cheapest and typically easiest to find. Then there's something called calcitic lime, and this is very effective at raising the uh, soil's pH. It's mainly just calcium. It's not very high in magnesium. Uh, so again, for high magnesium soils, calcitic lime might be the way to go. Kinds are typically harder to find, and it can be more costly when you do find it. The other um, third main category of lime is what's called hydrated lime. This is a quick way to change pH, uh, often though it's not a long-term pH change solution, and for conditions that require high doses, there can be toxicity issues. Lastly, it's a mucous membrane irritant, and typically why with this lime, you'll see keep out of reach of children. Uh, it's a very usually a fine, dusty product, and if you do breathe any of that in, you will feel kind of that burning sensation of your mucous membranes. Uh, there's also that's well, lowering soil pH. This is a condition where your pH would be 7 or even a little bit above that. Common Rocky Mountains and West, where the pH is a little higher. 
uh, than the desired amount for plant growth. Typically, you're looking at adding sulfur, iron sulfate, or aluminum sulfate. These are all ways to kind of help lower the pH of your soil to help get it again to that sweet spot, that target range of being slightly acidic for maximum nutrient availability and for the best plant growth.